got Greyhound with Tom Hanks, which was released on Apple TV, uh, which is doing quite well, I hear. And uh, we're going to have George start this one off. He's our it war is. movie we aficionado. Well. Like I've, a lot of I've, people are watching it? No, I've heard that uh, Apple TV is doing well. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So George is a big fan of war movies, so we're going to have him take it away with Greyhound. I'm going to drink my Coke while I listen to you talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for this movie, I was... I, I honestly wasn't all that excited hearing about this movie, yeah. and I don't know. If I hear that. I, it, it just it kind of like fell flat. I was like, I'm not sure what the point of this movie is, but like the fact it was, I mean, even the fact it was a war movie didn't get me extremely hyped. But when I watched it, I got hyped. <laughs> <laughs> so this this movie basically, you know, Tom Hanks, he's he's like a the commander of a vessel in it, and. Uh, I think it's a destroyer um it basically is crossing yeah, it's a destroyer. yeah it's, he's crossing the atlantic with Pacific. was it atlantic no it was atlantic they were going to oh, they were literally going to britain it tells you how bored i was um and honestly i don't think that the uh the canadian navy did anything in the pacific theater at all so that was another thing uh, <laughs> but yeah so uh this this movie i thought like i didn't think it was going to be interesting I literally watched like the first 10 to 15 minutes of it and was bored out of my mind. And then all of a sudden, the submarines show up. And I got so excited. What are we gonna do? We'll bring hell down from on high. Air escort to Greyhound. You will now be out of range of air cover for the next five days. How many crossings does this make? This was my first. I got some. Most likely a U boat. He's trying to slip under us! Fire! We have a kill. Distress rocket, sir. We have hits directly on the convoy. The wolf bag's haunting us. U boat, starboard bell! Lost seven ships and fifty souls. What you did yesterday got us to today. It's not enough. Fire is there. Even one thing, the action is um, decently well shot. Yeah, it wasn't for a movie that goes on demand. I don't think it was gory enough, in my opinion, though. Um, hmm. Like I, I saw. Like some of the, I mean, it's, you sank my battleship. How much are you gonna see? <laughs> I mean, they um, could go in and watch people get blown up into pieces and ships going down. I guess. I think I, I guess you know. they got pretty close to that. I mean, like you saw debris. Um, the guy got shot and uh, and like dragged away. Yeah. <laughs> like he was bleeding out of his neck or whatever. Yeah. So it, there was there was like uh, there was a certain amount of uh, gore to it. It just it didn't feel like. It's more tension. Yeah, a lot it's more, more so. It's more built was, on tension alone. And Rather like than, just yeah. uh, I forget what, what suspense, suspense. Yeah. There's a lot of suspense in this, and uh, that that part was that part was really cool because like honestly, normally naval warfare is it takes forever, and it does. Um, so like they thankfully they sped it up to two hours for like fifty hours worth of stuff, so um, it went a lot faster and was a lot more exciting than it ever would have been otherwise. Um, I think trying to portray a naval situation they did an absolutely wonderful job of it this was like honestly the cinematics of it i thought were great but at the same time um i i don't know i guess people that turn into uh war movies aren't so much into this one um so that being said though uh tom hanks he pulls off a great performance as always, As Tom always. Hanks, he, can't, a lot of he, he just he can't do bad. Yeah. Uh, some of the portrayals of the other characters, even though there hardly weren't any other characters besides Tom Hanks, this was really a Tom Hanks movie. Um, if you like Tom Hanks, go watch it, I guess. Uh, just basically, if you're into World War II, if you're into naval uh, battles, like this, this is a great movie for that. But like, you're not gonna see, you're not gonna see submarines, like the like. You're only seeing this from one perspective. Tom Hanks Tom looking Hanks. out the window for two hours. 
Yeah. Yeah, basically. And then w walking outside because he can't see because it iced over. And I'm, I'm not eating that. You have to eat, sir, every 10 minutes. <laughs> hey, you gotta have coffee. Hey, Bob, you've had coffee I, today. I felt, I felt so bad, though. What's your score? Um, I don't know. I, I would say, like, like only watch this if... Go watch Midway. Go watch Midway. That was way better, in my opinion. This this was, like, a perspective of it. Like, if you were in the Atlantic Theater, yeah, maybe. Um, but, yeah, Pacific Theater, in my opinion, was much more interesting. Midway was actually fact-based. So, go watch that one instead. Or 1912 again. 1917. 1917. <laughs> 1912, oh god. There's a whole other movie. <laughs> George did a pretty decent job of covering the plot points so i won't go too far into the details about what greyhound is a movie that's basically one scene with very little story um tom hanks is the leading an escort group for the allies that setup is one long scene and then the movie ends um now the scenes are great for the action when they do happen um for example like that boat that's like inches away and it just comes flying by like, that's the only time my butt cheeks got tight throughout the movie. It was just like, <laughs> oh, oh really? my goodness. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, the only I was like, time I woke up. <laughs> that literally was the only, and Tom Hanks is just like watching it like almost hit them and it just keeps going. This movie is a lot of yelling. And by, what I mean by <laughs> yelling is, bearing one, two, six, seven, sir, bearing one, two, six, seven, target required, four, three, it's six, five, like, yes, sir, target required. It's like, shoot me in the face. Gibberish. It's like another language. It's like, no, it's like 80% of this movie yeah. is them just screaming, you sank my battleship. Yes. Exactly. And I loved it. <laughs> if you like that, by all means, if, if what fun. I'm saying and what George is saying, like, you're like, oh, I can't wait to pop this open. Go for it. Like, that's all you. But for me, like, I need one scene of you saying, Baron, one, four, six, seven, sir, target required. I don't need, like, 90 minutes of that. And it is. 90 minutes of that, yeah. Oh my god. There's this, they, they do one scene with the minor character in the boat um, with Tom Hanks. That's like two minutes where I'm like, oh, it's story, and then it just stops. Yeah, oh, like they're gonna one talk soldier. Now. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, no, they're not, right. Yeah. And then there's the, another, and it's a good scene. I'm not against that scene. It was, it was a good scene. Um, but that doesn't sell the movie for me. And when the movie ended, it wasn't much of a movie at all like it just okay i guess it was more like a documentary about a what plot it. i didn't care about yeah. it was like watching a gopro of somebody that lived on a naval ship for a week <laughs> 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 like um it has no story progression just seems Not, nothing that just plays out every couple of days i guess yeah. um things i liked only a few tom hanks carries this movie he's a lead actor gets get the big bucks there's nothing to carry. He's carrying nothing. No, but he, he is carrying he the, a as a captain. Acting, I, mean, I mean, yeah, because he's Tom freaking Hanks. That's what I mean. That's that's my positive. Like, do. well, he is he yelling did, things he, and he not did eating. Portray yeah. a, he did portray a naval captain very well. I, um, I I'll give, give you that. that. Give there you were that. there were things that I liked, but they there's just so much stuff. There's a woman that has that doesn't come back, and has <laughs> no point. To the, it's like the beginning of the movie. It's Christmas. Oh, yeah. Yep. That never like, came back again. Nope. nope. Um, that reading Bible funny. verses. Is he praying for somebody? Is he asking God for help? Nope. He's just reading a Bible verse. Okay. That went nowhere. This movie just begins and it just ends. And it's... I don't... I mean, like, 1917 had a story still. Say, Oh, the one thing that I did forget. I think... This m would have been better in Adobe or IMAX because I did Probably. hear oh, yeah. the entire movie is filmed with IMAX cameras, hmm. and that could have been cool. If you're watching a docu war thing, it probably would have worked, I guess. But I didn't mm -hmm. see it that way. Even though I have a big screen TV, it still didn't. It didn't feel like the cinematic experience that you it could have the, been. The vibrations, honestly. This one, it was it was very similar in a way to Midway in the fact that uh, like hey, you're Carmen, doing because I never saw that, but I'll take your word for it. You never watched Midway? No, because the way you described it is I just. I loved it. Oh my gosh! I love 1917. I love the Blood Five, but there are certain war movies they have to have like a like a hook. Like I I hated Dunkirk. 
Um, I hated this movie. Dunkirk I, I was don't so like, slow. Like, yeah, but Gosh. they both movies have the similar thing. It's it's a situation. It takes place in like these days, and there's no story or character development. It's just but the situation. Midway, there there actually was. Oh, there was okay. But. So maybe I'll check it out because of that. But for me, like this movie is it doesn't like the same. It just doesn't make a good movie. This is not you don't care. how you they make don't movies. Make you care. Yeah, like nineteen seventies. I one hundred percent care. Yeah, about both those characters and him getting that message across. Yeah, to the general to Finding stop his the brother. invasion. Yeah, yeah, and all of that stuff. Like I cared. There's nothing in here for that, and that's the the most disappointing thing. All right, can I jump in? Yeah. All right. So. Oh, sorry. Final score. Go watch nineteen seventeen. Skip this movie entirely. Or, um, gosh, what's another recent? For me, that come out that I <laughs> well, you would recommend, it, but I don't want. I don't have yeah. seen it. Uh, um, nineteen seventeen. Go see nineteen seventeen. That's what I'm gonna do. Shannon. All right, so I'm gonna compare this movie to another movie that is about a sinking ship, but it's a much better movie, and that is they, Titanic. Oh no! They sink my battleship. Oh no! <laughs> so when you watch Titanic, okay, it would have been very easy for James Cameron to just jump right into this period piece about a ship that we all know sunk. Yeah, we wouldn't have bought it. We wouldn't have loved the movie as much as we did if, if it he wasn't had done for that. Characters, but he sets up the characters yeah. in modern day for like 20, 30 minutes at the beginning of this movie. So More he has a, like he has a character yeah. go, a long time. Yeah, he's a character going in who's like this, you know, frat boy who's just there to find the treasure or that just wants to find the ship and he doesn't really care about anything that happened. And then he meets Rose who was this elderly lady who survived the Titanic and she had her love named Jack. So he starts to, over the course of the story, communicate with her and he starts to care. And then we jump into the sinking ship story from the 1800s. And we, at that point, are so connected with Rose and her love Jack and the guy who's trying to find the diamond that we are fully invested and excited about the story. And then the sink ships. This movie, just yep. none of that. It did try for about two seconds, and I couldn't even figure out who that woman was or why she was in the movie. Yeah! And then she never came back up again. It's a bad way to tell a story. It's a terrible way to tell a story. Yeah. So if they could have made this movie better by spending the first 10, 20 minutes at least on yeah. setting up who Tom Hanks is, yeah. why he's important, yeah. why we should care. Yeah. This is just a bunch of bombs going off. It's like watching a fireworks show in the water. I couldn't have cared less. I was bored out of my mind. Probably fell asleep a few times. Every time I looked back at the screen, it was just another, like... Don't say you fell asleep in a professional review. I didn't actually fall asleep. Oh, but okay. I'm saying, like, I I could have fallen asleep. Yeah. It was that boring. If I hadn't been I'll watching it for a review, there's no way I would have gotten 10 minutes into this movie. <laughs> um, like Fahad said, this is 90% just yelling. No, 90, 99% just yelling. I didn't know what any of the words meant. It felt like I was watching this movie in, like, Arabic or, like, some some language that I don't speak. Like, Well, it's military talk. I don't, or, I don't you know, speak Navy military talk. talk. Right, they right, should have right. set up at the beginning of the movie what that stuff meant. Oh, they spend an oh, hour wow. of Titanic yeah. is setting up why it's important that they don't hit that iceberg because that's the only way that this, sink is gonna, that this ship is going to sink. Right. So when they get to the point where you're hitting the iceberg, you're on the edge of your seat because you actually care and understand what's important. I didn't care or understand what was important or what was being said for any of this movie. Like, not a single line, not a single piece of dialogue did I care at all. And everything is just so at weird. All. Why is that dude just keeps coming in telling Tom Hanks to eat? And why is Tom Hanks yeah, not Yeah, why is he eating? not eating? Why? They have more food for everybody. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> like, nothing makes sense. I'm like, okay... First, I was like, the reason Tom Hanks is not eating is because they have less food, and like he's trying to give it to their soldiers, but that's not the reason. He just is forcing us. And why does that repetitive line of that guy coming in, and like the way, like I guess, what is the point of that African American guy? He can't really be in charge of anything. He's just a kitchen guy. All the white people do all the. Battles. It's probably historically accurate, but again, it might be, they but could have told not... us some of his story. That yeah, like, what the hell is happening? Like, tell me 
do what a does this represent? You could even make this movie an hour longer and do a flashback for each character for 10 minutes. Oh, like an cool. Orange is the New Black style where you go into every person's story and then how they got onto the ship and why it's important for them to survive. Show us their families so we care about them getting back to their families. None of that is done. None of it. It's so, so, so boring. I hated this movie. I don't <laughs> understand what you liked about it, George, but oh, I, more power to you. Can I, can I bring that up? What Please. I liked about it? Okay. So, one of the interesting things about this is that they were being attacked by a wolf pack. Now, a wolf pack is a group of submarines where basically, so, you might have noticed it multiple times throughout this movie, they basically had, they had their sonar, which yeah. basically they could only check one direction. Okay. All right, so, essentially, you got six targets out there, you can only check one direction. Hey, you know what would have been You're great if they confused. explained that? Yeah, exactly. If they had told us <laughs> they should have. They should have done a lot more explaining in this movie, but they instead just Who packed wrote it directly? garbage we so, just wrote a better movie than they directed yeah true so essentially the only time they were able to tell what these submarines like where these submarines actually were all uh -huh. at once yeah. was when they came up for air which okay. was why they would show up on the radar okay so when they were having issues with the radar they were freaking out because that was the only way they could tell where but we didn't know that were. so we didn't care hey when i saw dunkirk i actually couldn't hate it essentially dunkirk was they were leaving france and, right but um, like they were I think they came to they Ireland. Were, they were all stranded on a oh, beach. Oh, no, England. Actually, the I actually know part, somebody who was there when the soldiers came in and she was in charge of feeding them. Oh, wow. The interesting part of Dunkirk is that basically that was a point when the French got betrayed by the English again. Yeah. Because... The well, French? Yeah, yeah, well, essentially, the literally, the English sabotaged their guns and left them there. So it was like... <laughs> <laughs> they really screwed over the French on that. Yeah. So I can understand all the animosity between the French and the British because, yeah, that was another instance of it. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So I don't know what else to say. I think I'm, <laughs> I, I think I think Chad, probably... let, let our hatred be known about this movie. I didn't yeah. hate it. I hated Irresistible, and I'm mad that I had to see it. But you hated this movie. Sorry, <laughs> Uncle Tom. I just, uh, Uncle Tom Hanks. I just couldn't, I couldn't get through this to, one. To be fair, I would have seen this movie anyway, because I'll watch anything with Tom Hanks. Even if, True. if I don't like it, I would have seen this movie some way, shape, or form. Um, if you need a good war movie, go see 1917. If you want to watch oh, yeah, that was ships so good. sinking, go watch Titanic again. Or Midway. Or Saving Private Ryan. Heck, even go watch Dunkirk, even though it's had a similar style of filmmaking. It's better, at least, and it's told way better. If you um, want to see Tom Hanks being great at being Tom Hanks, go watch Saving Mr. Banks. <laughs> I've never seen that. Is that good? Oh, my gosh, it's amazing. I haven't seen you it. have hey, to watch whoa. it. Oh, you got to see Mary Poppins first, though. I mean, I've, yeah, everybody. You haven't seen Mary Poppins. The new one. Besides yes. the old one. The no, old no, I saw one. the old one before we saw the new one. Oh, okay, good. You said you hadn't seen it. Yeah, I hadn't at the time. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a Mr. year Banks. ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I, it's okay. Like I saw Mary Poppins one. I like Lin Manuel and Mary Poppins too because he's Hamilton, and he's great. I love his little candlelights, like bike riding. It's the chimney it. thing. I, I know it's a throwback. Yeah. It was great seeing Dick Van Dyke just jump out of a chimney yeah. or no, out of a desk or whatever that cameo was. <laughs> that was pretty great. Um, actually, I heard Mary Poppins two bombed hard, and I yeah, yeah. because the first one's under... perfect, and they never should have tried to remake it. Which is weird because I really like the second one. I barely like the first one. Really? Yeah. Why well, did you not like Mary Poppins? It's a classic. I, yeah. I think it's because there's more story and a point in the second one. While the I first... disagree. The first one has a huge point to it. Oh yeah. I think you missed the point, and you got to watch Mr. Saving Mr. Banks. It'll tell you the point. I mean, I I got the. I'm not saying that I don't remember the. I just thought this Mary Poppins two had um the. The father issue, we were selling the house, and how to keep the family together. Um, the bank that was like trying to take the money away and like not. The first give... one did it better. It had all the same plot points and did it much better. Yeah, and it was a happier one. <laughs> yeah, much happier. What the? It ends on a happy note. They still get to be together, and the bank still. I call... barely remember the second one. I didn't okay, you might. It. Yeah. I just think the style of I think the updated effects really helped a lot. Well that's um, true. Um the 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 song where like the books come and they're like dancing on the books. Lin Manuel and um, Emily Blunt. Oh, see I didn't care much for that. Maybe I just I mean I just really liked it. Yeah. I am not saying the first one's a bad movie. Yeah. Because when I saw it I liked it. I just 
really enjoyed the updated effects and storytelling of the second one. So that's just me. Not that anybody cares here. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on. I don't even know what movies we have to watch next. I Desperados on Netflix. Is it good? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching this episode of Geekdom Movies, special outdoors edition in my backyard. We will be back next week with some more movie reviews for you, so stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave us a comment, check out our Patreon page, our website, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We've got it all. Peace out, guys. We will see you next week. And movie theaters are opening up soon. We will be trying to go into an actual theater and see some new movies as soon as possible. Peace out, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.